Well, for more on the big movers today, joining us now is Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital Management. Diana, thanks so much for making time today. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I, I'm curious to get your take on, on tech resources. You own the stock. A, a lot's been happening with this company. It's been this uh, target of a potential takeover. There's been a lot of, of back and forth going on out there. What are you doing uh, with, with your uh, stake in the company right now? Or what do you suggest that investors would consider with all of this uh, going on? Well, if you own it, hold it. And if you don't own it, maybe you can buy a little bit. The company is in play. We've held it from before it came into play, but right now it's in play. And next week we are going to have some news on that front. I thought you covered all the details really well before you um, got me on air here. I heard your uh, recap. Um, <clears throat> that's exactly it. The company uh, is going to vote next week, um, whether they're going to be allowed to split or not. And if they do, theoretically, that is going to raise the valuation and hence the pricing of the stock. So, um, you know, that is why it has jumped today. Um, and uh, we don't know what the news are going to be next week or what the vote is going to be next week. But I would think that as a shareholder, I would want to uh, garner the highest valuation and pricing that I can. So um, splitting, split, doing the split will probably do that. So we're hoping for good news. OK, yeah, we're going to continue to watch that one for sure, especially with yeah. that vote next week, Diana. Um, another yeah. uh, area that we're watching is the banking sector in the U.S. And yeah. we've, we've got some earnings results from some of the big banks so far um, and and a couple of the, the, the smaller regional banks as well. But there's still lots more to come. Um, what is your sense of, of the, the health of the banking sector in the U.S. And, and what we're going to hear with this round of results? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's always interesting to see what the market does <clears throat> when it absorbs uh, the headline. And the headlines are very negative, um, you know, the banking sector and data and earnings. And, you know, and the market is holding in pretty well, which, you know, it is inf it does give you information. Um, you know, you, you talked about Schwab before I came on, and the stock has closed up 4% in face of earnings, uh, where deposits are down 30%. So you can really spin negative headlines off of these earnings. But, um, you know, the stock has already uh, priced that in. And it's always about what the news are relative to what's priced in. And if you look at the Schwab chart, you will see that a lot of negativity has been priced in. So um, we we don't own Schwab, but we do own TD. And I've mentioned TD uh, before on air uh, last time I was on. So the stock already also has been hit and it's priced in a lot of the negativity and is now um, coming off uh, some kind of base. Um, and you are getting paid 5% to wait to see what happens. And of course, when you have stocks that have uh, bottomed or or you're you're getting them at some kind of bottom, you should always keep in mind that you should have a stop loss. In other words, a level where you let go of your theory of uh, and don't fight the market. But for now, these things are holding in and it seems like uh, a lot of negative headlines have been priced in. Now, we are looking for other earnings coming up. Um, some important investment banks like Goldman, Morgan Stanley, uh, Bank America are going to report this week. So the market is in, 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 the, in the information gathering yeah. uh, period and is, is kind of holding muted up 30 beeps, down 30 beeps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A bit of a, a, a flat uh, session today, at least. Um, you know, it is interesting. We, yeah, we are going to get a de deluge of, of, uh, of results in the, the coming weeks. And this week included, yeah. we're going to hear from Netflix tomorrow. We were just talking about it in the, the market recap there as well. Kind of a, a, an interesting um, uh, headache that it, uh, it had last night with trying to do that live streaming um, event, and yeah. it didn't work out. And and, and maybe that seems like a, you know, a one-off uh, thing that shouldn't be necessarily that big of a deal. But if you're thinking of Netflix's future, is it live streaming? You know, is, that, is that an area that would be important to Netflix going forward? I'm not sure that that's what we would be looking for in these results. But um, what, are, what, what would you be expecting from, uh, from Netflix when we dig into their results tomorrow? So let's just contextualize it. Netflix has... Um, clawed back up to levels uh, seen a year ago after it had 
some horrific earning misses in 2022 and is now um, rallied right back up. So if you held it through the downturn, you would be now, you know, back on your money and, and, and maybe a little more. So what are we expecting? They're battling with, um, you know, their whole pricing uh, situation and, 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 and password sharing and, and, you know, is the advertising channel going to work for them? And so that's kind of what we're watching for. Uh, and, and also Netflix, Tesla, and all these high-flying um, stocks that people love to own and trade because they're kind of the current future uh, type of growthy names uh, people love to see them win. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, there is a lot of eyeballs on it from the perspective of uh, sentiment to the market in general and to growth uh, stocks in general. So it's going to give us uh, uh, two types of flavors, one for its own stock and one for the market as a whole. That's interesting. Uh, mood setters uh, yeah. and with, with the banks, too. It seems to be that yeah. way, um, you know, to get a sense of the, the stability out there. Um, I, I wanted to also just get your take on uh, on Nuve and whether Ryan Reynolds uh, dipping into that in some way, some sort of an investment or partnership here uh, is is on your radar. You know, we own the stock from before uh, as well. And so it's a great company to begin with, uh, doing a lot of good things and very, um, very uh, more specific to uh, growing with its customers. Um, So it has done well before. Uh, I don't know his investment history. I do know he makes good movies. And it's always great to see somebody uh, putting their name behind uh, company, uh, it, it, it's confidence building. So, you know, uh, we'll take it. Uh, but the company has done well before that. And we, we like the company as it is.